this is Bob. Hi. <laughs> and uh, this is the Penal Geology and Mineral Museum and the Penal Gem and Mineral Society monthly meeting for March, April 17th. No, hello, March, April. March 17th, 2011. And tonight we have a wonderful talk on the geological history of Pinal County, Arizona, by our own curator and director, Dr. Raymond Grant. He will be on in just a moment. I can see him in my studio, so he's here. And uh, let's see, I had an announcement. I don't have an announcement. Oh, there is. A, yeah, there it is right under my face. Uh, we do have a link to the uh, to a hi geologic history chart of Pinal County. It is a corrected one, minus uh, three zeros uh, uh, for the uh, uh, geologic history of Pinal County. And it is uh, available at a, at a link in a PDF form, in a link to... Um, down below in the video description. I should say hello to Tish and Deanna and Diana and GeoNerd, uh, who have all checked in in the comments. You're welcome to leave comments there and questions. Uh, Ray will be taking questions uh, either during or after his talk, his choice. He hasn't told me, I forgot to ask, which he will do. But I will put him on in just a moment. Uh, Dr. Grant can introduce himself, but he needs no introduction. You know, the one mineral I didn't put up was Ray Grantite. I didn't put that in the slideshow, and I should have. But I'm going to turn him on and turn him in so he can speak for himself. There he is. Um, and he should be able to... Uh, Can you, can you hear me? I can hear you. And you can see me. I can see you. Yeah, I can't. I just have the, the PowerPoints taking the whole screen, but that's all right. That's that's all right. You don't need to see yourself, probably. Probably. <laughs> uh, by the way, your PowerPoint is not in slideshow mode, so we can see your upcoming slides. It is on my screen, not on yours. Not on mine. Uh-oh. Uh, but that's okay. No, wait we can a see, We can see the... Now I see you. Okay. So You're doing something I, with the... Can they see that? They cannot yet see it. We haven't mm -hmm. put that up. We haven't put... The, I haven't put that up yet. So they just see us. And when I see when I click slideshow, it takes my whole screen and I can't see anything else. Ah, okay. So what? that didn't happen the other day. Uh, right, because you set the you need to set the slideshow uh, for just the window. Remember the individual browser thing. That's under setup slideshow. It's on the Streamyard or on my program. On your PowerPoint. Oh man, what was it called? It's under the slideshow and it's setup slideshow. Oh, all right. Oops. Uh, back to that. Sorry, well, folks. Technical difficulties. We're we're always experiencing those. So every time I click on slideshow, it does that now. Wait up here. Okay, what do I want to put? Uh, you got a little pop up box. You want set up slideshow and then there's a pop up box for yeah. browse for an individual. Um, browse for an individual window, okay. yeah. And then you, you make sure that's clicked, and then you go over to start slideshow at the top. There you go. Better. All right. Whoops. Where did it go? It, okay, I, I can see it. You can and see I'm gonna it. Put it up. I'm going to put it up while we... There it is. All right. Can I All right, so everybody should be able to see that now. I hope so. Yeah, I know it's uh, <laughs> it wants to test me. I can tell. Uh, yep. But 
I'll let I'll let at this point uh, I'll let Ray introduce himself and he can give his background. I will disappear from your screen, but I will be right here yeah, all along. So you you see it and they see it. You think yes. They'll yes. Turn we, the screen yeah. if they don't, right? Okay. Anyway, I'm Ray Grant and I'm uh, trying to start this uh, geology and mineral museum in Coolidge, Arizona. And I put together this program. I'll go to the next, see if I can advance slides. I can't advance slides. Why can't I advance slides? Uh-oh. Bob, I can't advance slides. You need, you need to click back on the PowerPoint window and make sure it's in front. Hmm. I know. If you still won't change. Do you see the PowerPoint window? Yep. Okay, click on it. Yep. And then and then you should be able to advance your slide. No, I'm pushing the advance and back and nothing's happening. Okay. <sighs> Um, why? Because it's on your end and not mine that it came up. No, it's I, I it's it should be uh, on yours. Okay, if you click on the, sorry folks that are just joining us, I see a couple people have come in. We're, uh, we're having a little bit of technical get difficulties. Hi, Carla, welcome. Um, let's see. If you, okay, you, you click so that you've got the PowerPoint window in front. No, I think so. It's there. Okay. And I see you moving it a little bit or jiggling it somehow. Well, um, it goes full screen or not full screen. Okay. Well, you don't, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, and you should be able to now advance. I click on it, it changes full screen and back, but it doesn't. It should move. That's weird. All right, well, stop slideshow. Uh, and go back to the other display, you know, just stop the slideshow and we'll have to deal with having the Sidebar on there. Can you stop the slideshow? Can I stop it? What do you want me to do? Stop the slideshow. Um, no idea. I've got Chrome Finder. Yeah, see, I can't just hit exit. 
or escape rather. Hmm? Escape. Escape. Okay, you have to you have to click on the PowerPoint to make sure it's in front of everything else, and then hit escape. Uh, here, uh, we worked for this, so why don't I um, run the slideshow? And make sure it's working. And I'll take uh, I'll take yours off screen. All right. And I'll put mine on screen, and we'll just have to deal with. All right. Well, next we'll go to the next slide and see what happens. All right. Let me pull that forward. Oops. There we go. Okay. So anyway. Um, I'm going to talk about the geology of Pinell County, and you might say, well, why such a you know narrow scope? Well, we have this museum, the Pinell Geology and Mineral Museum, and I think nowhere around would be a, an exhibit of geology of Pinell County. So most of the things that I've prepared for this are uh, to put in the exhibit, and uh, Bob has made this nice little chart that summarizes geology. So this is available for all of you if you want to look at it. And so we really have, I'm going to sort of divide it into four parts. Uh, if you look at the bottom, uh, and it's a little bit hard to see, but Proterozoic, these rocks are often called Precambrian by geologists. And you'll see as we go through a lot of the literature, they're labeled Precambrian. And in Arizona, a lot of people talk about the older Precambrian and the younger Precambrian. So I'm sticking to that. Uh, it seems to be a little bit easier. And then we'll do each of the eras, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic, and talk about what happened there. So um, this is a, you know just a summary. There's a lot more detail. I taught Arizona geology when I was teaching, and it would be three hours a week for 15 weeks. So I've got to get that all down and into, you know, the next hour. So uh, if you're looking for detail, you'll have to go on and do research. This is sort of a, you know, uh, summary of the things that have happened here. So next. So if we go back two billion years ago, uh, Arizona wasn't here. Pinell County wasn't here. The North American continent was much smaller. And we can look at the next slide. And you can see the different ages. Again, you see how they use the word Precambrian. So the Wyoming Craton was there two and a half, three billion years ago. That was the beginning of North America. And then all these different belts were added as part of plate tectonic activity. So we had subduction and related volcanoes. And these each of these different zones, each one being younger as you move out from the Wyoming Craton, um, you know, help to form the continental rocks that are here. And you can see that where Pinal County is, we're in that sort of orangish color. And um, most of the beginning of this part of the continent would have been then 1.6 to 1.7 billion years. And you can call it Matazel or Mazatzel, depending how you like to pronounce that word. Okay. So the oldest rock we have is the Pinell Schist. Now rock units all have two names. The first name is a place where they're found, and the second name is the name of the rock. Uh, so Pinell, it's named after the Pinell Mountains, and then the rock is Schist. Uh, if there's more than one rock type in the, in the formation, then it'll just say formation, and you'll see that as we go on. So there are a bunch of sedimentary and volcanic rocks associated with the trenches, the island arcs. 
And this happened about, you know, 1.7 billion years or 1,700 million years ago. These rocks were buried in a period of mountain building. And by looking at the minerals in the rocks, we can tell that they were buried down to about nine miles. And that changed them from volcanic and sedimentary rocks to phyllites and schists. Next. Now, I have these maps and, and my friend John Callahan made them for me. They're for the exhibit. And what we took was the Arizona Geological Survey's most recent geologic map of Arizona. And we just divided it up and put each of the different age rocks by themselves on the Pinal County map. So this is where you would find the Pinal schist in uh, Pinal County. Now it's probably under most of the county, but of course it's covered by all kinds of younger things, younger rocks and sediments and things like that. But this will give you an idea, you know, of where, where you could find it. Okay. So just to give you an idea, if you're out hiking around or looking, uh, I pick places that uh, are near, I live sort of dead center in the picture there off a little bit to the left, uh, Sun City Anthem in Florence. And so there's Pinel schist you can see sort of around my house. Uh, the arrow on the map below shows you, you know, where it would be on the, on the main map. Next. So this is behind the sheriff's station on Hunt Highway, right where Arizona Farms Road comes out. And it's a small hill, not very impressive. If you drive out there and walk up on the hill, it looks like this. Oh, next. Uh, and this is what the Pinel schist would, you know, typically look like. Uh, because of the metamorphism, the minerals line up in the, in the schist, and we call that foliation. The rock breaks along that way, and it tends to stick up vertically. So if you're out wandering around and you see anything that looks like this, you'll know you're looking at the Pinel schist. Now, the Pinel schist goes all the way from Phoenix to Bisbee. I mean, everywhere that uh, Matazel... Uh, orogeny or, you know, uh, rock formation was added to uh, North America next. Typically it's mica and quartz, although there are other kinds of varieties, even some calcareous ones, but this is probably one of the more common, you know, kinds of rocks. Next. You can also go on Interstate 60 between Florence Junction and Superior. So there's big outcrops there along the highway. Uh, where the road cuts are, and that's all the Pinel schist also. Next. Then following that, there was a series of granite intrusions, uh, magma introduced into the Pinel schist. Now, there's a lot of different granites in, in Pinel County, probably four or five different ages at least. And if you just pick up a granite, it's really hard to tell. And, and over the years, because of age dating, they've been able to, you know, try to determine what age the different granites are. And a pretty good idea by now. So the next one will show you the oldest granite. Not very much. You see it just at the very top, a little bit by superior. That's in the Pinel schist outcrop that I showed you earlier. And then a little bit over to the uh, left. And this is about 1.65 billion years. Next. And the place to see that, that little hill, that little gray blob there at the end of the arrow, is these four hills. And you can see where Walmart is. That's a Walmart in Santan Valley. And Gary Road goes just north of it and curves around to the south. And the next slide will show you the hill. So this hill is this 1.65 billion year old granite. And then you, we can see the granite, the next slide. And this is what it looks like at the particular road cut there where I just stopped to collect some samples. There's a lot of epidote. This pistachio green stuff is epidote. So uh, the granite there has uh, this epidote in seams or veins in the, in the granite. Next. And then we have a younger granite, 1.4 billion year old granite, um, and it intruded into the area too. So all of this activity, the burial of the rocks, the metamorphism, the granite intrusions was part of mountain building that was taking place here 
uh, you know, at that time. So you can see there's a lot more of that granite uh, in Pinal County, quite a bit of it around. And the next picture is, uh, again, my house is sort of in the middle, so there's quite a bit of it around here. Uh, next slide, uh, Walker Butte with the C on it for Coolidge. So there's the granite, the basalt we'll talk about later, much younger. That's 1.4 billion year old granite on the bottom. Next, the Walker Butte granite quarry. They were quarrying the granite there for uh, yard rock, fill, stuff like that. And then Post and Butte, you can see a real tiny pyramid on top where Poston is buried. And again, the basalt's on top, but the 1.4 billion year old granite's underneath. Next. So during this time when all this granite was happening, we were undergoing a period of mountain building. And so this might have been what it looked like here in Pinal County. So next. The <clears throat> You see the older Precambrian there, Pinel schist, and at the bottom, granite, diorite. So those are the igneous intrusions. And then the angular unconformity. So that was a period of erosion. And the area was eroded down to a relatively flat landscape. It had some small hills in it. And then around a billion years ago, actually over some period of millions of years, uh, younger Precambrian sedimentary rocks were deposited here in this flat country. And you can see the pioneer formation. That means it's more than one kind of rock, dripping springs quartzite, mescal limestone, troy quartzite, and then an igneous rock diabase. And then that's the end of the Precambrian, and the balsa quartzite would be Paleozoic in age. So next. So this is uh, where these one billion year old rocks are. Um, again, you can see they're not very common, but they're especially around Superior. So next. This is just north of Superior. You see on the map there, this is a big hill. The top is a quartzite and pioneer shale on the bottom. It's Some of these are slightly metamorphosed. So next. One of these rocks is a Barnes conglomerate. Uh, and the next one, the Troy quartzite. And then I just put in a picture next of the um, river gravels because almost all the river gravel, if you go out in the Gila River um, or any of the rivers around in Pinal County is quartzite. And what's really interesting, you can see the quartzite can be white, tan, red, green, almost any color. And these are all either mostly Precambrian quartzite, some may be in the, from the Paleozoic, but uh, it's the hardest, most resistant rock to weathering. So it's the one you get in the gravels. And then if you notice just in that picture, you go back at the bottom left-hand side, there's a piece of granite. So granite would be the next most common rock in the river gravels after quartzite, okay. And there was some diabase and I just put this in. It's not real common here in Pinal County, but it intruded along cracks and if you're out, on any of these older rocks, any of the rocks we've talked about so far, because it's intruded through all of them, you will see these black stripes. You'll know that you're looking at diabase. And the next slide shows some. So this is uh, in Solera up in Santan Valley. Actually, this picture is taken from where I took the picture where I was picked up the samples of the 1.65 granite. So that that's the granite there is the old granite. And then there's this diabase that intruded up in a crack. Okay. And if you really want to see the diabase, the place to go is to Salt River Canyon. It's not in our county, but these are dikes of cells that intruded between the layers of the uh, different conglomerates, sandstones, limestones. And so all those dark bands are diabase intrusions. Next. So then that takes care of Precambrian. The next time period, the next era after Precambrian is called Paleozoic. It goes from 541 to 252 million years. And North America was moving east. The continent of Pangaea was forming. So all the continents were coming together. The Appalachian Mountains were forming at that time. And in Arizona, it was just a quiet time. Next. 
And the sea essentially transgressed and regressed across the state during that whole time period of the Paleozoic. And in Pinal County, all of the Paleozoic rocks are marine rocks. They were all deposited in the ocean. So at the bottom there, you see a picture of what uh, it looked like here in Pinal County uh, 200, 300, 400, 500 million years ago. Uh, really interesting, you need to pay attention. Now, if we look at Florence and Tucson, you see the Paleozoic rocks, the thickness. This is how thick the pile was uh, that they've estimated, 6,000, 5,000, 4,000 feet thick. If we go up where it says Grand Canyon and you look there, you see there's 6,000, 5,000, 4,000 feet thick. So we had rocks exactly the same thickness that we see in the Grand Canyon piled over this area uh, during this time period, during the Paleozoic. Okay, next. So the easiest place to see these, of course, is the Grand Canyon. So there's the Paleozoic rocks. Uh, ones in the bottom are Cambrian, the ones in the top are Permian. Uh, underneath the, where it says million years is the Vishnu Schist. It's older than the Pinel Schist, but it's the local, you know, initial rock, basement rock that we see there in the Grand Canyon. And those rocks are there, you know, obviously most of you have seen them, I'm sure. Okay, next. So in Southern Arizona, the Paleozoic rocks are almost all gone. But remember, there was 4,000 feet, 5,000 feet worth of these rocks around Florence. And now there's none. They're, they're essentially gone. Uh, some may be buried, but most of them have been eroded away. And you see by Superior there's uh, probably the best place. If you want to go look at these rocks in Pinal County, you don't want to drive to the Grand Canyon. That's the place to see them. Next. So Superior's off to the right down there in the bottom pick of Post Mountain. We'll talk about later, much younger. And as you drive up the hill from Superior along Route 60, uh, these are all the same aged rocks that you would find in the Grand Canyon. So this is the Cambrian, Balsa Quartzite, and the Devonian Martin Limestone here. Next. You can see over there the, the different names, Balsa Quartzite, Martin Limestone. This is the Escobrosa Limestone, Mississippian aged rocks as you're going up 60. And then finally, the next one, the Pennsylvania Naco Limestone in the next slide. That's this. And then there are more recent volcanics on top. So if you would measure that whole sequence, you would get several thousand feet of uh, sedimentary rocks through there. And they're all been tilted. They've all been faulted, part of mountain building activity that's taken place here. Next. Um, <clears throat> there are some, uh, you see where Mammoth is, and the creek there right where the arrow is is Aravipa Creek. And just uh, north of Aravipa Creek, there are some of these Paleozoic rocks, and they're not tilted very much here pretty horizontal, look more like the Grand Canyon maybe. And so that's Devonian Mississippian rocks there. And John Christian's worked really hard. He's probably collected more fossils around Pinell County, at least more than anybody else I know. And this is a sponge that he found there, a uh, Devonian age sponge fossil. And the next are some of the other things. That, uh, he's actually collected these fossils in Pinell County. Uh, I haven't been with him. I don't know where it is. You'll have to find him somehow. There's the Blastoid Mississippian Age and Coral Devonian Age. I have stopped along Route 60 where I showed you that Naco. There's a big wide pull off there. I have stopped there and taken students in, and I have found some fossils in there, but nothing as nice as these. So John took these. He collected these, and he took these photographs, which he sent to me, which was kind of him. Next. So then the next era after the Paleozoic ends is the Mesozoic from 252 to 66 million years. And <clears throat> North America starts moving to the West. The Pangaea continent breaks apart into different parts and um, goes off and 100 million years ago, we did have some swamp and coals and dinosaurs and lots of erosion 
uh, that would take place because we were having this mountain building taking place there. Okay, next. So this is just a little picture of the plate tectonics because obviously that has a big effect on what happens here. So you can see Pangaea and the Permian that was in the Paleozoic and then the Triassic, it starts to break apart and Jurassic, Cretaceous, those are the three periods in the Mesozoic era. Uh, you can see it's breaking apart and Arizona is essentially moving to the west. And when it moves west, uh, the Pacific Ocean gets subducted down underneath it. So Arizona is moving to the left on the picture. The Pacific Ocean is being destroyed. It's being pushed down. Um, and associated with that, then we get the mountains that you see under the word Arizona. And we get all kinds of different activities because the sediments get subducted down in the trench and they start to melt. And, you know, they form magma, and the magma comes up into, into Arizona. And so the, <clears throat> somebody's made this map of Arizona to show how it might have looked during that time period. So in the southern part, it's all mountains because there's subduction going on. Uh, to the north, it's still flat, and we have sediments, of course, you can see rivers flowing out of the mountains to the north where we're going to deposit a lot of sediments. So if we go up north, we'll find, you know, more sediments of this particular age. Around here, we're eroding pretty much everything away. Next. And so <clears throat> I have this premise. I don't know how good it is, but you know, 100, 200 million years ago, all of this rock we see in this picture was over the top of Florence, Arizona, over the top of Pinal County, and now it's gone. Well, how do you get rid of it? Well, you need to make a Grand Canyon, maybe. Maybe not, but um, as these mountains got pushed up, so my idea is that we used to have a couple of Grand Canyons around the state of Arizona that are long gone because everything's eroded away. And maybe we had a Grand Canyon right here in Pinal County. Uh, if we could go back 100, you know, 150 million years and see what happened at that time. Okay, next. <clears throat> I think because of rising sea level, uh, you can see that there was a flooding of the interior of North America in the Cretaceous time. And that sea just barely touched on Arizona. This would be the last time that we had sea or we had ocean in Arizona. Uh, it, it, since then, of course, we haven't, you know, we've been away from the ocean. Okay, next. <clears throat> and during that time, we had uh, the coal formations in the Cretaceous rocks. We don't have a lot of Cretaceous rocks at all uh, in, in Pinal County, a lot of Mesozoic rocks in Pinal County, but we do have this coal field, the Deer Creek coal field, and if you're on my mailing list, you've got uh, a little blurb about it. And this is a sample from the Flag Foundation of coal that came from Pinal County. So there were actually coal mines here back in the early 1900s. Apparently they shipped some coal up to Globe and they tried to make coke and, and even I think out there by the coal field. And uh, from what I've read, there were a number of different inclines and shafts and tunnels. And there might be up to 60 million tons of coal, but it appears it's bituminous. It wasn't very economic, and there was a lot more coal if you look up there uh, in Black Mesa up in the northern part of the state. So it didn't last very long. The coal mining came and went, and, you know, that was, that was the end of that. <clears throat> the other thing is, of course, the Mesozoic is the age of dinosaurs. And again, if you go up in northern Arizona where the sediments were deposited, because you have to have some kind of sediments for these fossils to be preserved in, uh, petrified forests is that age, you know, Mesozoic age. So, you know, we find dinosaur fossils there. <clears throat> there are some sedimentary rocks in southern Arizona. So people have searched and searched, and, you know, not so long ago they found uh, this Sonorosaurus, this Brachiosaur uh, in southern Arizona. It's a state dinosaur now. Um, and they found parts of 
for other dinosaurs. So in Southern Arizona, there's actually evidence uh, for dinosaurs. So I have this picture that they were running around here you know, where I live at some time in the past. Next. The place to really see this is to go to the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum in Tucson. Uh, they have quite an exhibit. They have a, a big uh, reproduction of the find of the bones, how the bones appeared in the ground. They have this information, this nice chart. They have a, a reconstructed leg bone there that you can stand. There. And they say it was small for a brachiosaur, but it sure looks plenty big when you look at that leg. So we had dinosaurs. Uh, we just don't have very many rocks around here that we can go look for them in because those rocks are so rare uh, in Pinal County. Okay, next. Towards the end of the Mesozoic, uh, part of the plate tectonic activity, we started getting granite intrusions. Uh, you know, there, there's lots of little bits of activity and, and little bits of rocks if you get into the detail at any one given place. But the um, 60 to 80 million years, and so geologists have labeled that the Laramide time uh, because it sort of um, goes over two eras. It's part of it's in the Mesozoic and the, some of it laps over into the beginning of the Cenozoic. Next. And you can see where this granite is. <clears throat> so it's 60 to 80 million years old. So another granite to go out and look at in Arizona. Uh, next slide. Uh, on the Gila River here, one of the places you can see it, Grayback Mountain is this granite, the next. And the granite boulders on the Florence Kelvin Highway, if you're looking for, you know, sort of an interesting place to go look around, uh, this is the 60, it's about 65, 70 million year old granite. That's about the age of this granite. Okay, next. <clears throat> I just want to say something about the spheroidal weathering. Not all the granite weathers spheroidally, but because, you know, we've looked at other granites that didn't. And it depends on the fractures. And if the fractures are such as you see in the drawing, then water gets down on the fractures, you know, down into the uh, cracks in the rock. And if you look at the cube, you can see that they got one arrow on the face and two arrows on the edge and three hour arrows on the corner. So what they're saying is the corner weathers the fastest, the edge next fastest and the face the slowest. And eventually you end up with a sphere. And then, <clears throat> and th this might happen, you know, during a wetter climate when there was more water draining down through those cracks. But then when, if the climate dries out, we're going to start getting some erosion. And when you erode away the weathered material, what you have left is all these really kind of nice round boulders. And so uh, as you travel around Arizona, you, most of you probably have seen these nice boulder fields at different places. So in Pinal County, we have our boulder field on Florence Kelvin Highway. Next. During the Laramide, we had a lot of activity, uh, you know, associated with the granite of minerals, um, mineral, gold, silver, copper. <clears throat> I'm just going to say a tiny bit about that. That's another whole talk that I have, gold, silver, copper in Pinal County. I'm stuck on Pinal County. Um, but anyway, gold production in 100 years there, you know, was... 1.6 million ounces, one uh, probably a couple million ounces by now. Silver production in that 100 years was uh, 66 million ounces. I'm sure that's been more now. And copper in that 100 years was something like almost 13 billion pounds, billion pounds of copper. So, you know, and Ray Mine and those mines are still operating, so there's a lot more. Uh, next, so here's some gold, this mammoth St. Anthony mine. It was started as a gold mine, but they also mined silver and copper there too, but uh, there was gold. <coughs> silver King mine, we have a YouTube program about Silver King, about the silver mines by Les Presmick. You can go on our website 
and click YouTube and see all the different programs. And you can look at the program about the Silver King mine. Jeff Scoble took these photographs. These are silver specimens collected at the Silver King mine, which is north of Superior. And they're really uh, quite amazing and quite valuable and, and hard to come by because they were mined back in the 1800s. Next. Uh, there's copper, and I, I just put this in. There's copper all over Pinal County. You notice there's that pyramid that Mr. Poston is in up there on the top. And here's some pits on, on the west side of Poston Butte. Now, the rock there is that 1.4 billion year old granite, but there's a, just a couple little shallow uh, shaft like things. And these were exploratory, and I think they, they represent some diggings from late 1800, early 1900s. And if you walk around over there, you'll see like the next things like this, is chrysocolla. So, you know, there's not a lot of copper there, but there's obviously shows of copper, which is why they dug. And then just across the street from there is the Florence Copper Project, which is the newest, you know, copper uh, recovery situation in, in uh, Pinal County. Uh, they've been going, they've been producing copper. They produced their first copper last fall. Uh, I think they're probably uh, over a couple million ounces by now. Um, I, the picture I have there on the bottom is old. I need to go out and, and get a new one. And then we come to the, the final era, the Cenozoic era, which is 66 million years to present. So remember, some of the Laramide time granite and some of the copper deposits and some of the other mineral deposits are forming during the beginning of the Cenozoic. And then the plate tectonic, the subduction zone, got very flat and it moved off to the east. And so we have a quiet time here, generally quiet, 30 to 50 to 30 million years or so. And then the, the activity returns back. And so 30 to 15 million years ago, we have quite a bit of activity mid-tertiary. Some people call it the mid-tertiary orogeny. Uh, we have explosive volcanism, uh, some sedimentary rocks, uh, metamorphic core complexes, a lot of things happening. And then the final thing, the last 15 million years is the basin and range, which gives us our final you know, appearance of the landscape. Okay, next. So from 30 to 15 million years ago, these really violent, explosive volcanic eruptions, uh, Superstition Mountains are, you know, really well known for that. And there's lots and lots of stuff written in literature about the Superstition Mountains, uh, these big explosive calderas and rocks uh, all over. And the next, uh, this is what it would have looked like in Pinal County during that time, perhaps maybe even a little worse, but we would have had, you know, this explosive volcanic ash piling up everywhere. Next. So here's where these rocks are, 30 to 15 million year old. So you can see in the north part of the top of the map, that's all the superstition stuff. Uh, down in the southwest corner, there was a volcanic center somewhere down there. We got all that stuff. And you can see over in the east, lots of uh, this kind of volcanic rock. So uh, there were had to be numbers of volcanic centers and you can go all the way down to the Chiricahuas. So we have quite a range or quite a long stretch of, of this type of volcanic, this explosive volcanic rock. Next. So the superstition mounds, everything you see here, all these cliffs, all this rock is volcanic rock that came out of those calderas. It exploded out most of it. There are a few lava flows, but not very many. Most of them are ash and breccia and uh, things that, you know, just accumulated. A lot of times we use the word tough, T-U-F-F, -F, to, you know, explain these rocks, these explosive rocks. And, and they, they're they hot and they cement together and they tend to be cliff formers. So uh, this is, uh, you know, typical superstition volcanic rock, what we see next. Well... This is the program for the Pinal Gem and Mineral Society. So our very first field trip, turns out, was six years ago in January 2015. There's a picture I have of our very first field trip, and we're looking at superstition volcanics. So 
Pickup Post Mountain in the back is superstition volcanic rock, you know, 30 to 15 million years. And these ruts in the, in the tuff uh, were cut here by the wagons. The wagons had steel wheels and they were carrying the ore from the Silver King mine, the silver ore in the late 1800s, from the mine to Pinnell, which is down at the bottom of the hill in the, in the river valley. And the uh, town's pretty much gone. There's nothing left there anymore. But uh, uh, then we went up on the top to collect the uh, obsidian, uh, the Apache tears. So uh, I just thought I'd throw that in and maybe we'll get a member or two out of the thing. Unfortunately, this was signposted and it was a neat place to go. And the new highway construction there made it extremely difficult to get there now. Uh, uh, rough four-wheel drive people tell me I haven't been there since they finished the highway. They blocked off the road that we used to take completely. The next. I just put this in. This is something I see out in my backyard. It's a hill on Hunt Highway across from the Florence Hospital. There's the granite, 1.4 billion year old granite on the bottom. There's a layer of the tough volcanic ash shot out and then basalt, which we'll come to later, it's still younger. You know, as you go up the column, the rocks get younger and younger. But there's actually some volcanic rock from the superstition volcanics or one of the other ones that blew in there and accumulated the volcanic ash. And I put that in there because uh, wandering around on that hill, next slide, I picked up a bunch of Chalcedony. Now this Chalcedony is wherever these volcanoes are, This 30 to 15 million year old volcano, there's a chance you're gonna find this Chalcedony. It's just quartz. It forms from the hot water at the end of the volcanic action, uh, it tends to form in cracks in the, in the volcanic rock. And the thing is that almost all of it is brightly fluorescent under short wave fluorescent light. You need to get a good fluorescent light, but a good short wave fluorescent light, you know, look at the color it turns them. And, and it, Apparently, it's because there's a very, very small amount of uranium in that Chalcedony. Not all of it fluoresces, but I'd say probably 90% of it does. And you get this really nice. And so I just picked those up walking around. I keep meaning to go back and look around the hill some more, but I haven't done it yet. Next. Uh, Box Canyon, you can see on the map just north of the Gila River, you take the road out to Price. Uh, a lot of people like to drive out there, the four-wheel drivers or the hikers. Uh, everything you see in this picture is volcanic rock. You see Superior there, so probably related to the superstition volcanics. And I just put this in you know, to show you something a little different. And then the next picture uh, shows you the rock there. So this is typical of the tough. Uh, ash and, and fragments and chunks of rock all just sort of fused together from the heat of the, the volcanic eruption to form these, you know, cliff forming kind of rocks. So that's a real typical kind of thing. Uh, Picacho Peak State Park, the, um, you see it there on the bottom on the right, that little yellow, that's part of the these same age volcanics, everything in the peak there. And then I found this wonderful picture on the Arizona Geological Survey they have a, a, a photographic sort of album. They have five, 600 pictures on there. So this was a geologist taking his class out there. And I guess it was easier for him to just to draw pictures on the side of the vehicle. Uh, he has a couple of different pictures from different field trips out there. So you can see where Picacho Peak was. So this area 20 in the 25, 23 million years ago, uh, it started to be pulled apart and these metamorphic core complexes started to lift up. They, 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 they rose and, and I think part of it's due to the igneous activity. And the rocks slid off the top. They call these detachment faults. So you see that fault there. Yeah, you put one through the word geology, but uh, down below Picacho Peak, these faults, there's one at South Mountain, there's one uh, and the Catalinas, uh, you know, they're around here. And so I put that in just to show you. And of course, that's a state park or a good place to go hike if you want to see these volcanic rocks. But essentially, 
Picacho Peak slid off the top of the Picacho Mountain. As you can see, it slid down that fall. And as it slid down, it got tilted there. Okay, next. Uh, associated with those volcanics, we have the uh, obsidian, the Apache Tears, the Perlite Mines in Superior. Uh, <clears throat> this was an obsidian, uh, you know, actual lava flow that cooled very quickly. Uh, maybe under a lake, maybe under snow, who knows, but something cooled it quickly to form glass. It formed obsidian. But over time, obsidian's unstable. There's no really old, old obsidian. Uh, in fact, some archaeologists can use the alteration of obsidian artifacts to get ages. But the uh, everything you see in that lower uh, left-hand picture, that was all obsidian. But as water got in there, it changed to the perlite, which is what they're mining. And the obsidian cores are left. And if we could wait, you know, another million years or two, then that obsidian would be gone too. There wouldn't be any obsidian left. <coughs> and just most of you, most of you are familiar with the obsidian there. And so they're just remnants of uh, the unaltered layer. So it was there would have been big thick chunks of obsidian there if you would have been there 15 million years ago. Next. So then we come to the last thing that happened. Uh, in Arizona, we have two main provinces. We have the Colorado Plateau, which you're familiar with, I think, the Grand Canyon and you know all the sedimentary layers and all the you know Monument Valley and Canyon de Chez, et cetera, et cetera. And we have the Basin Range where we are. Uh, and so as the San Andreas Fault formed, and the subduction stopped, the area started being pulled apart. As it was pulled apart, the basin range started forming. The transition zone there, which a little bit of it in the northern part of the county, is more mountainous. And it really has some of each. It has some of the Colorado Plateau looking stuff, and it has basins, you know, like we have in the basin range. So, so it really it has a combination of both of them. Uh, that, that you can see, but essentially basin and range is what we're what we want to talk about. So next, so here's a picture, typical Colorado Plateau geology is just horizontal sedimentary rocks like you see at the Grand Canyon, or the basin and range is a series of these ranges with these broad flat basins in between. So Pinal County is essentially all in the basin and range. Next. Get the picture of what happens starting 20 million years ago. The San Andreas Fault formed, and we pull this area apart. A little bit earlier, we had the, you know, uh, metamorphic core complexes and detachments, and, and part of that was due to the uplift of, I think, the magma and things. But this is the real pulling apart. So as you pull it apart, the basins drop down because, you know, you're stretching the, the crust and it, they break along these faults. The mountains erode then and fill in the basins, uh, and eventually, and I just called the little picture, I added Walker Butte on there, because what you have left is you have these little hills that are left as everything erodes away uh, on the sides of the mountains to fill in the basins. Okay, next. So this is a typical basin. They can be 10, 15,000 feet deep, uh, they're really pretty unique in the sense that they fill in with sediment. Uh, they're one of the reasons that we can all live here is because this is where people got the water when they first came. You could drill a well anywhere out in the basin. You see where it says aquifer. Uh, and you could start pumping water, and you could pump almost as much water as you wanted. So it was easy for people to spread out across Arizona and even though it's a desert and it's dry, just drill a well and, and you had water and uh, no problem. Uh, this is just an aerial view to give you an idea. You get the picture, I think, that we have the ranges, the rock outcrops, and then the basins, uh, mud, sand, gravel that fills them in. Next. Now, initially, a lot of the basins were had 
salt lakes because the water would run in and the water would evaporate. This is in Death Valley where the water runs in and they, today and it evaporates. And for some millions of years, these basins just would fill up and evaporate. And eventually they got to be connected together. So the Gila River and uh, the Salt River, and they, you know, now any water that falls here eventually, would, if you don't stop it at a dam, would drain out to the uh, Pacific Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico, uh, California. But, you know, the early time period, we're collecting the salt in here. So next. So here's a, over at Eloy, you look on the right, there's a, a well. It's, it's 10,179 feet. They drilled that well. I have a, something about it in the next picture, but they drilled through the fresh water, brackish water, and they drilled through salt and gypsum. So that was all uh, the rock salt and the gypsum that was forming as these lakes were evaporating in the basins before the Gila River connected this basin up to the next basin. Uh, and then eventually you can see there you know, hit bedrock. So the next picture shows just, a, oh, no, oh, I did. Bob didn't get that picture. I have it on mine, never mind. Uh, so I just put this in because to me, it's one of the real curious things for Pinell County. 1980, 81, Pinell, County had an oil well drill, fill of petroleum. It's, if you go down south of Florence towards uh, Oracle, Oracle Junction, you'll see Deepwell Road. And off of Deepwell Road in 1981, Phil's Petroleum put this, it's like a 10 story drill rig, gigantic thing they had there. It's gone, if you go there today, I, I mean, I saw the pictures of the drill rig and I had to go find this place. So the concrete, you can see the concrete platform yet in the back that this was on. And there's this little pipe and this little sign. But right there, there was a three mile hole drilled down through the rocks and they were looking for oil. They were looking for Paleozoic rocks, you know, the, the ones that mostly eroded away that they thought might've been buried there and might have had oil in them. And they found nothing. I think they had sediment and then granite all the way. So not much oil to get out of the granite. Okay, next. Then <clears throat> the most recent activity that we really have of interest, uh, aside from the erosion and deposition, we have some basaltic volcanism, some final volcanic activity. Around Florence, it was eight to five million years ago or so, something like that. And over by uh, Gila Bend, there's a big volcanic field that I think is about a million years old. So different parts of the area, there might have been some different ages. Next, you see the map. So, you know, not much. That's all the basalt is right there. You can see where Florence is right by the number three. And the three just says something about the age five to you know, 8 billion years. Um, and then you can see all the rest of the map, there isn't any. So it was a pretty small local volcanic field that was here. Next. And here's where all these hills are that were on that map where they were marked. Uh, again, right around my house, which is, you know, on the center of the picture there. So places I've been. Next. There's a big quarry there, Vulcan Materials has. They're mining the basalt. They're using it for riprap and road fill and rock stuff. And you can see the quite a thick basalt flows, several flows that they're mining there. And associated with these basalt flows, you know, if we go to Sunset Crater, it's the most recent of the basalt activities. Uh, you know, we see all these cinder cones. So at the Vulcan Materials uh, quarry next, there, there are these piles of cinders and things. And so some people have suggested that the volcanic vent where that little, this patch of volcanic rock that you saw on the map came from was somewhere right here. Uh, <clears throat> don't know that for sure, but you know, the cinders are there. Uh, the hospital hills, uh, basalt on top of them. You can see that they're tilted. So sometime after the basalt flow, there had to be more faulting. So sometime in the last 8 million years, uh, these hills were tilted, faulted on the, on the normal fault there. Next. 
Off of Post and Butte, there's a pyramid, lots of basalt, layers of basalt next. And there's some different kinds of basalt. If you climb up that hill, some of it's real solid, you know, stuff that they like at the quarry. Some of it has piles of gas bubbles. This was taken there on Post and Butte. So a number of different basalt flows that make up the top of that butte. Next. Finally, real quick, uh, we have vertebrate fossils. The S there stands for... Um, Camel Canyon, it's in Pinal County down along the San Pedro River. Next. At Camel Canyon, they found fossils of mastodons, horses, camels, stabbing cats, etc. Next. So it might have looked like this if we would be here 10 million years ago. These kinds of creatures were here. You can go to the Arizona Museum of Natural History in Mesa. You can actually see them. There's a uh, mammoth and there's a, a stabbing cat. Uh, they have really good exhibits and really good fossils there in the museum of these, uh, you know, recent mammals that, are, that were here that, of course, are extinct now. Next. So we go back 10 or 12,000 years ago and the people started showing up. And so we go to more recent history. And next. So finally, I'd like to say, well, what, what's going to happen in Pinal County? There were high mountains. There were oceans. There were dinosaurs. There were explosive volcanics, the superstition. There were fluid volcanoes, the ones I just showed you. There were mastodons, giant mammals. Well, what are we going to have? You know, looking at the geology. Well, at least while any of us might still be around. But volcanoes, probably not anymore. The volcanic activity seems to all move north to you know, the area around Sunset Crater and that part of the state. Uh, earthquakes, well, maybe. We'll look at that in a second. Floods, sure, if it ever rains again. And everything's going to erode till it's flat. All the mountains have to erode away, and, and the basins fill up a little more, and the rivers carry the sediment away. Okay, next. <clears throat> So here's 150 years worth of earthquake records from the geological survey. You can see one earthquake almost made it in Pinal County right there on the border. And I think from my understanding, it has to be greater than a three for people to feel it. So you wouldn't even feel it. Somebody recorded it with a seismograph. So I don't think we're gonna have much in the way of earthquakes here. Next. Floods, we might have this. The, the Pinal County Historical Society gave me this picture. You can see the, this is Florence. <coughs> the courthouse is in the upper left-hand corner there. And this is pretty amazing. I mean, the place is really flooded out 1955. Uh, they have, the county has put a lot of flood control stuff around, but, you know, I mean, who knows? Uh, to me, that's just an amazing photograph for the city of Florence, town of Florence. Next. And then finally, just one last point. We have people's activities. So this is a map of land subsidence. And the yellow stuff has gone down a fraction of an inch. And the bright orange stuff, the land in 12 years from 2004 to 2000 has dropped uh, four to six inches. The surface of the ground actually went down four to six inches. Well, this is because they're pumping out groundwater. As you take the water out, the sediment that the water was in compresses. Next. So <clears throat> here's a picture over at Eloy. Uh, between 52 and 85, they say that the ground went down 15.4 feet. You can see where it was in 77, where it was in 85. And if it's going down several inches a year, uh, in 30 years, it's gone down a bunch more. And what happens is then as that ground subsides, where there's bedrock near the, not too far down, the ground tends to crack. So they call these earth fissures. And if you want to know more about them, the Arizona Geological Survey has a tremendous amount of information about geologic hazards, uh, there's a lot of stuff, geologic hazards in Casa Grande, and they have a lot of literature, a lot of information about earth fissures and where they are all over the state, how they form, and their website is, is quite good. And then next. So uh, if you really are interested and there's something that, you know, I skipped over pretty quick, 
seriously, go to the Arizona Geological Survey. They have maps, they have publications, they have uh, newsletters, they have photographs, they have all kinds of things. And this is one of the happy boulders out on the Florence Kelvin Highway, one of the granite boulders, happens to be 65 or 70 million years old, but it's still smiling. So that's the end of this program. You can go to our website too. We got some stuff. Yep. <laughs> All right. Anyway, no, and, and, and a lot of these maps and, and pictures and things that I've gotten together are going to be in the exhibit. And I'm not sure when our museum will open, but keep tuned in because we sure want to open. We have a lot of new exhibits. Uh, we're working hard and getting the place, you know, just looking really good. And so, I th we're thinking grand reopening sometime, probably not till fall, but. No, know, I'm shooting we'll for Labor Day, but we'll, we'll be invited. <laughs> yes, everyone will be invited. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Ray. Are there any questions? You can put them in the comments on the YouTube and, uh, uh, and I'll try and get Ray to answer. Nobody ask a question during, but that's okay. Are there. Anybody? You keep going too fast. I don't want to give them a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions at all? Okay, I'm going to have to watch it again. I had several questions. I'll ask him afterwards. But <laughs> well, the point is, you can go uh, and you know, I tried to send that out in the newsletter. You can see any of our programs since last uh, August. They're all there on YouTube. It's Take your time and, and, you know, look at them. You know, you want to see something you missed in the talk tonight, go back and look at it. It's there. Bob's right. done a really, really good job of getting uh, all this material up there on the website. So it's there right. for you to look at. Yep. Yeah, we've got, we'll have, this program is going to be available immediately if you want to send it out again tomorrow sometime, maybe Friday. Uh, I'm going to chop off. There's a there's a 30-minute slide presentation at the very beginning of this video, but I will uh, download and chop off that and and uh, do a little other fixing up and then put it and put this back up as a second video. Both will be available if you want to watch the slideshow too, uh, but these will both be available. Um, Anyway, ah. Bob, thank you for showing slides. <laughs> sure, no problem. Uh, uh, Tish has a question. Uh, she was the park ranger at Santan Mountain Regional Park. Right. And do you know anything about the Malpai being no volcanic caldera? Well, I don't Malpai know. East. I'd have to look and see. I I think most of what I think I haven't been there in a while was granite, but I'm not sure. I think that whole mountain range is granite there. There's quartz veins where they mine gold and stuff. Okay. She, she says also that there was apparently a USGS survey done there many yeah. years ago. Yeah. And and the, ma the maps are available for the, you know, in the, on, this, on the Arizona Geological Survey site. And then Diana asked if that was a granite boulder. Yes. Okay. That last one. And Tisha does say that uh, uh, there they at Sandtown Regional Park they do have uh, a lot of panel schist, and they are there are miners' graves up there so as well. So. Mm. And. She asked if there's more information. If we come up up with it, I will uh, see if I can find some and, and pass it on to her. Yeah, I, I'm sure that on the geological survey site, if there's a map, uh, you can find it there. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we'll see what we can do. All right. Any other questions out there in, in TV land or YouTube land? I guess that's. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Uh, Diana asked if that was a Grand Ayat boulder. Oh, what? Because <laughs> of the eyes on it? 
I, I guess so. I don't. <laughs> uh, uh, G R A N E Y E T. I yeah. guess so. Well, well, I'm sure. You, you saw the eyes, so it has to be a grand eye. <laughs> All right. All right. So, I any last question? I couldn't resist adding eyes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for watching. I will um, shut us down pretty quick. I'm going to say goodnight to Gray and let, or Ray. Yep. No, no, you, thanks you've got all. small R, big G, so I read yep. it gray. And, uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll all see you someday in the future. Yes. Stay healthy and stay safe. You Thank too. You. All right. Nice. Night, night. If you click and go away, yes? Yes. All right. So he is gone, and I thank you again for watching this, the Pinal Mineral and Geological – Pinal Geology and Mineral – Museum and Pinal Gem and Mineral Society. There, I got them. I got them right. Uh, show for March seventeenth. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day if you celebrate. At least I was wearing green. And <laughs> have a very good night. And I will say good night and end the broadcast now. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>